It's three months on from the Grenfell Tower fire that killed 80 people. The conditions that led to the fire involve local council disputes, outsourcing, building regulations, topics that can appear dry and inaccessible. But as the fire showed, without proper scrutiny, that can become the recipe for an absolutely devastating catastrophe. My family lived in Grenfell Tower. You burnt them alive. They got burnt alive. I don't have my parents anymore and you only get one set of parents in this world and I had three siblings, they're all gone. How do you feel if you're sleeping in your bed and all you can see is like dead people? So as the criminal investigation and the independent public inquiry get underway, it's important to remind ourselves of the key questions that need answering. No sprinklers, faulty emergency lighting, gas pipes running along corridors exposed, fire equipment years out of date. Survivors and residents of the surrounding Lancaster West Estate had been warning of major fire safety concerns for years. They were warned and warned again so many times. Appeals after appeals after appeals. In charge of the tower was the Kensington and Chelsea Tenant Management Organisation, or the TMO. In 2009, an independent investigation examined years of complaints lodged with the TMO, surrounding not only fire safety, but also an apparent failure to carry out basic maintenance work and poor quality renovation. Investigators found the TMO had treated residents with contempt, despite repeated calls to improve a number of basic fire safety measures. In the months leading up to the tragedy, residents' warnings over what they called dangerous living conditions became more emphatic, questioning why there was only one fire exit in a block of 24 floors and no building-wide fire alarm system. They wrote, only a catastrophic event a serious loss of life of residents will expose the ineptitude and incompetence of the TMO and that it won't be long before the words of this blog come back to haunt them. So what allowed residents to be so persistently ignored? Management of Kensington social housing became wrapped up in a complex web of public and private companies, a surprisingly common setup for councils across London and the UK. The same is true of places like Aylesbury Estate in Southwark or Myattsfield North in Lambeth, where upkeep and refurbishment, crucial for estates built decades ago, is outsourced. This makes accountability for social housing tenants very difficult, and private companies like the TMO historically haven't been obliged to share information with the public, which means the very organisation that manages such a crucial public service is not directly answerable to the residents it serves. In 2016, the TMO contracted Ryden, a private construction company, who themselves subcontracted some of the work out even further to complete a £9 million refurbishment of the block. The contractors were encouraged to keep costs down, changing the cladding from zinc to a less fire-resistant aluminium, saving £300,000, just 3% of the total cost of the project. Police are now speaking to 60 firms involved in the refurbishment of the tower, and the cladding's role in the fire will be considered by both the criminal investigation and the public inquiry. Residents had called for systemic failures behind the fire to be investigated, but wider questions around social housing policy will not be covered. It's very much government-led, government-controlled, government outcome. A wider issue of deregulation to fight so-called red tape is also at play here. Eric Pickles, a former government minister, initiated the Red Tape Challenge in 2010, which called for government to scrap one regulation for every new one they created. But fire safety experts said the challenge meant ministers had not updated fire regulations for buildings because they saw them as a burden on business. For this reason, regulations did not require sprinklers to be retrofitted to high-rises, something that would have undoubtedly saved lives at Grenfell Tower, according to the director of the Fire Protection Association. So you have both the building of new social housing and investment in the current stock depleted more and more year on year. Management and refurbishment of social housing being outsourced and clear lines of accountability increasingly blurred. This is a story of the housing crisis taken to its extreme conclusion. Now on the night, Grenfell residents were told to stay put in their flats. We're stuck on the 23rd floor! Hello! The standard advice based on the principle that each flat is a fire resistant box. But the tower burned with such speed and ferocity that even firefighters could not believe their eyes on arrival. How is that possible? They jumped up and ran on yeah, the flats. How the f is that even possible? That was that happening. And that stay put advice lasted two hours after the first emergency call, at which point the tower looked like this. As it became clear staying put would be fatal, some tried for the stairs, 
such as Husna Begum, who was found dead on the 17th floor by the lifts. Oh my God, they're screaming! Or Farah Hamden, found between the 19th and 20th floors, cradling her six-month-old Lena. Others, like engineering student Mohammed Al Hajali, saw the only way out was to jump, but died from the fall. Firefighters' efforts to tackle the blaze were hampered by poor accessibility and inadequate equipment. Firefighters complained their radio communications weren't working properly. The compressed air breathing apparatus, clearly more would have been helpful. With the tower's single staircase rapidly filling with smoke, fighting the fire from the outside with an aerial ladder became all the more crucial, but crews arrived without the highest one. The highest fire service aerial platform in Britain it's not in London, but in Surrey. It arrived hours after the fire was out of control. Why don't we have this equipment? We are London, you know, we, this is the 13th richest country in the world. 10,000 firefighters have been axed from the fire service since 2010. Dozens of stations closed, leaving the poorest most at risk. Research shows the highest incidences of fire occur in neighbourhoods with the highest rates of deprivation, for a complex range of reasons. Buildings like Grenfell, with 120 flats across 24 floors, of majority low-income families need the very best fire safety provision society has to offer, and they didn't get it. Kensington Council was relieved of their duties by government in the immediate relief and response effort after failing to provide information for survivors, rehouse tenants and establish rent amnesties. The wounds that have been created in North Kensington are not going to heal as long as you are ignorant enough to believe that you have a right to rule over us. Public relations disasters have continued to occur, revealing quite how out of touch the council is with the needs of residents. Shutting survivors and journalists out of meetings, or the ex-council leader suggesting that victims were partly at fault for the tragedy by declining to have sprinklers installed. But many residents felt that we needed to get on with the in installation of new hot water systems, new boilers, and that fitting, trying, trying to retrofit more would, de would delay the delay the building. Appointing a new Tory council leader, Elizabeth Campbell, has done little to regain the trust of the community in North Kensington. I haven't been into the high-rise council blocks before, but I am certainly doing that now. With only 14 families successfully rehoused two months on. You've let the dead down, now you want to come for the living? If the council wanted to defend themselves against accusations they neglected low-income residents in the borough, in the eyes of the community, their response to the fire only contributed to the case against them. People shitting out there, no, no food, no houses, a lot. People walking around lost in the streets. What do we want it now? What do we want? Justice! We are not listened to. And this had to happen, bruv. I don't even. This had to happen. People being burnt alive in 2017. Come on, it's not right.